What's up, YouTube? Today, we're gonna to do something that I think no one has ever done before. At least not on YouTube that I could find after one minute of searching. We're going to pour a soft plastic lure in a mold that I printed from a 3D printer. You've seen people do molds from FDM printers, kind that kind of spew out stuff, boom. So today, I'm gonna to pour a two-part open pour mold that I created using Soriatex Sculpt Resin. What makes Sculpt Resin so cool? It has extremely high, for resin, temperature tolerances. It has a heat deflection temperature of 380 something, like five or six degrees. And Plastisol, you generally pour around 350 degrees. No other resin or FDM material can actually handle these hive temperatures without bending. So quick check, what heat deflection means is given a certain amount of pressure, the material will start to bend. It doesn't mean it's going to melt necessarily at that temperature, but it will deform. So I've seen people on other channels create molds using PLA, which is again, uh, extruded out filament, like you've seen in my previous videos on the kayak stakeout pole handle, right? That's FDM. I haven't really seen anybody do it with resin on YouTube yet. I'm sure there has, I just haven't seen them, but I've never seen someone do it at a higher temperature. And that's what we're gonna do today. Oh, so, a quick bit of disclaimers. I have never poured this mold before. You're gonna see the absolute first pour here. I downloaded this mold, I didn't create it. And for the life of me, I cannot find where I downloaded it from. I've opened up the file, there's no no information in there about it. I've done searches on most of the common 3D model places. So if you've seen this mold, if this is your mold, please let me know. I will link it down in the description below, uh, but I can't find it again. So today I'm just gonna pour maybe three or four of these baits for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it pretty quick. First pour is always kind of a burnout pour. You'll see I got a lot of dust in there from where I had to sand these molds and I had to drill them out. We're gonna go over these, the actual printing of the molds and the creation of them in a separate video uh, that I'll link in the description below as soon as I have it up. So you'll also see that these molds are pretty gross on the outside. Um, this is my first time printing with this resin. And this resin has some very strict printing parameters. Uh, I'm still relatively new to resin 3D printing, so I don't necessarily have all those parameters down, but I got the inside, the cavities of the mold printed to a, um, a resolution that I liked and a quality that I liked. So I decided we should go ahead and pour them. The standard material for soft plastic molds is aluminum. It produces excellent results, high quality, lots of detail, has excellent heat dissipation, uh, so your lure is going to cool down quickly and you'll be able to pour again quickly. And it's a material that will literally last a lifetime. Unless you're beating it up with a hammer or something, it's going to last forever. So the main downside to aluminum is cost. To get a relatively high quality CNC aluminum mold, you're looking anywhere between $60 on the very low end for a single cavity open pour to upwards of $300 or more for a multi-cavity two-part mold that's made for injection. It gets even more expensive if you create a custom lure that you then wanna have an aluminum mold made out of. Uh, aluminum CNC is somewhat reachable to the home hobbyist, but typically you're gonna send that out to a facility and you're talking you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars uh, to get these molds made for someone who knows what they're doing. All right, a quick comment on cost of the resin molds. Um, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. I'll put them in the video right here, but the hollow mold, I wanna say was less than four bucks. And when I printed it solid, it got up to less than seven bucks. Obviously the more resin you have, the more cost are involved in the print, right? Because resin costs money and the volume of resin you put into any particular thing you print basically ends up being the cost. I'm not including the cost of my 3D printer because I don't want to get into, you know, de uh, deduct, uh, you know, whatever that is. I don't want to get into math and finance and accounting. That's not what this channel is about at all. But I do have an Elegoo Saturn, which is a, what they consider a medium size resin 3D printer. 
uh, and it costs about, I got it for 500 bucks. I think retail is going to be like around 700, but you can use a smaller uh, 3D printer like an Elegoo Mars. Uh, just, you know, you're not gonna be able to print like really um, big molds. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to create custom lures at home, get them printed out to prototype them, and then create production molds using resin. This should keep my cost way, way down. But let's see how the quality is. All right, here's the mold that I'm going to be using today. It's uh, really high quality, has lots of details in it. It's two part, it's been, it has the, um, the registration buttons in there and it goes together relatively easily. I am gonna have to clamp it together to get that gap out of there. Um, I had to do actually a lot of sanding and a lot of work. Did some drilling here um, to get these holes open. The, again, I'm not really good at printing this resin yet, so I think I've, I kind of overcooked it and I lost dimensional accuracy here. So I had to sand down these uh, registration marks to get it to fit together. We're gonna be clamping up and we're gonna be pouring it. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to be using some dead on plastics. This is the worm formula. I think it's the sinker. It's what I like to use for swim baits. But really, this isn't about the plastic today. It's about the mold. So I'm just gonna microwave up some real quick. Got a ton of air in there. So if we get any air bubbles, let's not blame the um, blame the mold you can see I'm pretty frothy and um, as I mentioned before I think I got my dimensional accuracy and just the general printing time on this thing is not quite dialed in so I had to clamp it with three clamps because it was had a decent amount of warpage in there and all kinds of other issues so let's see how she pours all right I'm just gonna pour this one straight no colors no additives just uh, straight up clear. Let's see how it goes. Well, that little pour over will come right off and uh, let's give it some time to uh, cool off and we'll come back and we'll demold. Touching the outside of the mold, it's not very warm, which is actually a little bit of a, I don't know, concern's too strong of a word, but it just means it's not dissipating the heat out of the lure, right? So I put you know, roughly 350 degree hot plastic in there. And this is still really cool to the touch of the outside. So that just means it's not pulling the heat out of the plastic and therefore the plastic will take longer to uh, solidify and get down to the right temperature we want it to. So I'm gonna leave it in there a little while longer. I think I'm probably pretty good to demold. I didn't put any lubricant in here um, cause mainly cause I don't have any right now. Don't have any worm oil or anything, but uh, also just want to kind of get a feel of how easy it is to demold without adding anything. Okay. The mold does feel warmer than the uh, first time I touched it. So that's a little bit better sign, I guess. Just takes a while to dissipate. So let's see here. It's a little sticky. I don't think I waited long enough. Let's see here. Let's roll this off here. Tail is a little extra stuck. All right. You can certainly see here the bubbles. Those are all my fault, not anything to do with the mold. But the detail that I'm already seeing is pretty fantastic. Um, I don't know if you're picking that up there. Uh, we'll get some close-up shots in a minute. Um, but it looks really, really good. I'm just touching it. still really soft. Um, it's probably been in there for uh, probably at least, I'm thinking, six to eight minutes. I didn't start a timer when I started it. Uh, so it could be a little less than that. I know I got three minutes in from the last time we spoke uh, Before the timer went off. So this is holding in heat a lot like there's none of this resin is warm at all So it's really holding in that heat um, So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out 
reclamp it up and we're gonna pour another one in here and um, see how it goes. So this mold um, didn't warp as much. So it looks really gross on the outside because I tried to plant it flat but support this, um, which was a horrible mistake. Uh, and then the next one, I also printed flat here with a little bit better support settings, but I had a problem where it kind of came unhinged from the build plate I was using. Um, but it is hollow with air in there and um, it didn't deform as much as the one I printed out of solid resin. I think the solid resin as it cured uh, warped a lot more than um, the thinner resin walls here. So that's something we'll be looking at in the future with more mold builds. So we're gonna pour, again, first one in the hollow mold with um, really hot plastic. Since I don't have to use three clamps to keep this one together, I can use two clamps and I can lay it down flat on the bench, which is really nice. So we're gonna give that um, 10 minutes, same as we gave the last one, uh, demold and see what it looks like. All right, time's up. Let's demold the first lure out of the hollow mold. All right, it's interesting. I can feel a little more heat on this side. So I'm thinking maybe my theory of air doing better than solid resin at dissipating heat is true. Uh, this guy is pretty stuck together though. Let's see. Oh. All right. Man, so he is not as shiny as the other mold, but I think, again, this is the first pour here, so there's probably a lot of dust and a lot of debris from my sanding and just kind of laying around the shop uh, that's going to dull that, but... It looks great. Uh, the color is really cool. I like it. And uh, again, we'll pop it out here. It comes out pretty easily. It's still pretty warm, even after 10 minutes. And pretty, pretty gloopy. Gloopy. I'll uh, stick it up here and we'll pour one more. And then we'll line them all up next to each other and take a look at them close up. Wow, guys, that was really cool. Check out this lure. Super duper high detail. Came out great. This is the last one I did. He's still a little sticky, but absolutely great detail. Wow, guys, for a V1, those are some amazing results. I'm super, super happy with those. Looks fantastic. Super great detail. The mold showed absolutely no signs of degradation or any damage whatsoever from the pour. And I'm really, really looking forward to throwing some of my own custom designs into some lure molds next. All right, so where do we go from here? We have proof of concept that these molds work perfectly, at least in an open pour setting. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna keep following along. We're gonna be doing a lot more lure making videos coming up. Take care and tight lines.